Daddy, but the telescope with Mama. Theon's going to help me unbox the telescope today. And we have a Celestron Astro 56. We've waited a long time for this, haven't we, Theon? Ah! Okay, you're going to help me? I can, yeah. yeah, let's bring this one up. Boxes. This one comes this way. Now, what's in the box? So we've got an optical tube. You've got yeah. eyepiece two, there's and there's another eyepiece there. one with a diagonal. There's another box here. There's a mount, which is the Wi-Fi mount. Another box here. The tripod. Another box. Mount. Which is the Wi-Fi mount. Another box. The tripod. There's an accessory tray that goes under the iPod I or under the like tripod, that. darling. And then there's a finder, which goes on top of the telescope. Some instructions here, how to choose your target, centre it, turn on the red dot, uh, adjusting your finder, and showing you how to do your finder, and your finder's now aligned. And it also shows you how to do your finder scope here as well, to view through telescope eyepiece. Okay. Oh, more boxes. Do you have scissors there? Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look. So, let's have a look at this one first, Theon. Let's take this out. Oh, now what could this be? Uh, the telescope. This has got three legs, so what do you think it is? Uh, a telescope. Is it the tripod? Yep. Yeah. Tripod, so... Careful, darling. Nice tripod here. I'm trying to do it. This is the uh, beautiful optical tube. So we'll just facilitate in. Okay. Beautiful optical tube. And we will come to these bits in a little while. And obviously the front plate, and we'll take that off once it's all set up. So at the moment, I'm just going to put that aside. these boxes. Three of these other boxes, so I'm assuming well, these are going to be my finder scope, my eye pieces, and uh, it's like Amazon, huge boxes for little things. <laughs> Let's have a look at this one. Okay. Yeah, huge box for a little thing. So this is the um, accessory tray. Show you that. This is the accessory tray. See. Goes onto the tripod here. Okay, so this is the next box here. Right. This one is the mount. Okay, Theon. This is the mount. Okay. So the mount is where the on and off switch is. Okay, darling. And where you plug in the 12 volt to run it for electricity. And it also shows where your auxiliary one, auxiliary two, um, in case you wanted to plug it into Ethernet cables, stuff like that. And then your Wi Fi code that will flash red when it's trying to connect. Okay, so this one is. Uh, your eyepieces and the battery this is for the for your batteries to be able to run your telescope um outside so you're not so you're not um you, when you can't plug into electricity here's uh, your battery so you need eight double a batteries did you not find it? I can't find my my Your finder scope. Your finder scope. Oh, no, this is a red dot finder, isn't it? Help us look for planets and stars, doesn't it, Theon? 
So your red dot's behind the scope, which I'll put the telescope together. Okay, not right now. I've got to put it together, haven't I? You gonna help me? Okay, so here we've got your generic 10 millimeter eyepiece and a 25 millimeter eyepiece. Always good to start off with a 25 millimeter with this telescope, as I was told by the lady in the shop. I got this telescope from Tring actually and uh, they do a really good deal um, that they do free delivery uh, which I thought was really good because I initially bought one of these which was broken I had to send it back um, and I had to pay £15 delivery but this one was uh, free delivery which was great so this is your star diagonal so basically you put this into your telescope these are really good because you'll pop it in and you can move it to the side and rather than having to bend your neck too much but again I'll, I'll, I'll go through that a little bit more later and um, this one is a, a smart which is the basic smartphone adapter which comes in the box as well but um, I do have um, a couple of these but this one if I remember from my last box I found was, was quite interesting because it's um, it's got like elastics on it so it's pretty good, um, it fits all sorts of phones, even the small iPads or, or small tablets and it's got these elastics on it to hold your phone in place so that's a pretty good one but again it's just a generic um, generic one so let's, okay let's put this all together there's a full book in here so this is um, all your instructions um, and this is for okay Fia. This is the Celestron Sky Portal app. This shows how to download the free Celestron Sky Portal app for Android and iOS. Um, and that will help you to obviously sync up to the telescope and be able to move it. So it's a go-to telescope. Um, okay. So it's been a few days um, since I unboxed the telescope, the Astro 5.6, and I'm going to put it together for you. I have put it together and taken it outside and had a few photos, but I just haven't had time to um, do this video. So tonight I have some free time, so I've taken it apart and I'm going to put it together to show you um, just how easy it is. And to be honest, it is incredible. It really is compared to the telescope scope I had before which was a Skywatcher 130 with an EQ2 mount and I was in love with that telescope when I first got it um, but the EQ2 mount and it had a tracker on it I never used the tracker I had it for two years I never used a tracker because I just couldn't quite get it had to um, complete amateur when I got it two years ago complete I mean I could name a couple of planets that I grew up with my dad telling me that's you know Venus that's Jupiter etc um, but it, I was just a complete, complete beginner. Um, so having the EQ2 mount was really difficult for me to grasp. Um, having to align it to the polar a polar star um, for a start, I didn't really know where that was. I was telling it straight up, and I'm looking up, and I think it was more slightly over. I, I don't know. I couldn't get it, and um, any time I did try and align it. <laughs> just knocked it and, it and it just came out of place and it was just so frustrating and I so desperately want to see nebulas and I've been doing this for two years and I haven't seen a nebula yet um, I haven't seen um, anything other than a couple of the planets which thankfully for this one I finally saw Mars so um, anyway back to this so we have the accessory tray and the, the uh, tripod so what we're going to do and of course And I'm out. Okay, so I'm going to move these just over here for a second. So, like I said, I have used this already. Um, so, I kind of have... I've put the battery, battery pack on here. And the reason I've done this, and I'll tell you why, is the first night I took it out to use it, I was moving the telescope um, from my phone around. And what happened is it moved... To the stage where the wire pulled and the battery pack actually fell off 
and hit the ground. And what happened there after that was my little wire came out. So as you can see, a very uh, amateur way, I have masking taped that wire in. I have pushed the wire down and now I'm putting it in the little carry case upside down. But this is only to use for when I go out on the field and I will most likely solder it on properly before I actually go. But at the moment, I'm not planning on going anywhere yet. So I've uh, used some key rings just to pop it in there and there. So that keeps it nice and safe. It's just an idea for me anyway. Of course, so I'm going to put it up a little bit, but not too much, obviously, because I don't want to be too high for you guys to see. We push this up and we take the accessory tray again, we just pop that in and there is a, a little uh, screw thing here. So we push that up and find the hole and it is nice and easy and we just pop it in. I think I've made it a little bit more difficult because I've put my little ring things on there. But um, you could always put your little ring things on if you wanted to do it that way after. So you put that on, position it in a way you want it. So on this accessory tray, it's also got this anti-slip um, piece over here. So you can put your mobile phones or, you know, it's got these holders here. So you can, you can pop some uh, lenses in to hold your lenses. Um, the eyepieces, I mean eyepieces. I say lenses because my partner has a camera, so it's really confusing. But yeah, eyepieces go in here and uh, as pointed out by uh, one of the astrom astronomy uh, beginners they are not 10 inch lenses they are uh, 10 millimeter piece eyepieces so okay so yes you can pop your eyepieces in there you can pop a mobile phone on here anti-slip or you know uh, anything really okay so i'm just gonna <laughs> pop the lids back on them Okay, so this is nice and solid. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop the mount on top. Again, very simple. Um, just a, a nice little hole there, screw. So it pops nicely in top, on top. So it, it's not really going anywhere, but you must screw it on, um, you know, to keep it safe. But, you know, once it's on, that's the position it's going to stay in. So uh, um, unless, until you... Um, put it onto your phone and move it because you cannot actually move it manually you shouldn't move it manually left and right um so you know pop it in and you see uh when you pop it in there's these um these little bumps here there's there's i don't know if you can see them from the side there's one there and then there's one over there and then there's one at the bottom there so there's three bumps and inside the telescope there there's loads of bumps loads of ridges so if you turn it you can hear so those, they, they kind of sit in between, you see. So I'm going to position it like that way, because when I'm going to put the scope bit down, you can see. Okay. Right. So that's nice and tight. Um, okay, I'll turn it around to show you the Wi-Fi and everything after. The next thing I'm going to put on is the optical tube. And there is a space here where it's going to slide in. And on the optical tube, you have this piece here so it's a running track here so make sure that the track um, goes on with the finder point the, 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 the red dot finder and the plate facing upwards so I'm gonna pop that in there and I oh, can't see it from this direction yeah. pop that in there and we're going to tighten that up Nice and tight, there we go. Now, this is kind of ready. You can move it up and down if you like. I found that sometimes when I am moving it up or down with my phone, sometimes it just won't go anymore. And I find maybe it's because I've manually moved it and that's the limit it hits. So just remember that when, you, when it's stuck on up or down, just manually move it up and then use your controls. You can manually move it up and down. Uh, when I bought it from Tring, the lady in the shop gave me a little um, show and tell, and she told me that it's fine to manually move it up and down, and it won't hurt it. 
um, but don't move it side to side. Um, I'm not actually sure if you can manually move it side to side. I think with a bit of force you probably could, but it's not great for the telescope. Okay, so this is your focus point. Uh, so you turn it left and right to focus. This, of course, is where we are going to put our lens at eyepieces. eyepieces. Um, so I think, first of all, let's have a look. Okay, so we'll put the star diagonal in first. Now, the star diagonal, as you can see here, it's basically, you, you can see what it does. It, it basically, if, if, if the telescope is too small for you to see, you pop this in, and you know, a lot of people, they're not really going to be really tall when you want this high, so it's great to put it in. And if you're using a camera or something, you can turn it to the side and have the camera there. That way you're not having to look up and over. Um, it, it, it's great, to be honest. I, I think it's great because I did find on my last one, I was constantly looking to the side and especially with an EQ2 mount, I was I was sometimes underneath it like this, looking up. Yeah, it was quite awkward. Um, but this one's great. You can just move this little bit and it moves. So um, red dot finder is on and the optical tube is on and mount so on. Everything is on. So what this um, telescope does not come with is a 12 volt cable that plugs into your PowerPoint. Um, it does come with a battery pack to do to use out in the field, but um, having gone through hundreds and thousands of mobile phones in the past, I have a 12 volt um, adapter here, which seems to work completely fine. I'm not actually sure if it's okay, but I'm sure one of you guys will probably pick up on it. If it's not, you'll tell me. Um, so yeah, um, we'll plug it in and we'll have a look. Okay, so as you can see here, you have your on and off switch and this is where the power cable goes in and you can turn it on there so we turn it on and i will show you just around here there is the wi-fi here and your auxiliary cable um, ports there they are usually for accessories that you can buy to go with the telescope now one thing I did notice with this telescope, unfortunately, I did mention in the last video that I'd bought one before and when it came, um, it didn't actually sync up to my phone and it, it wouldn't, my phone wouldn't recognise the telescope and vice versa. And the guy I bought it from, from a, a store um, up north somewhere, he actually told me that when there was the lockdown and everyone was desperate to get these telescopes, they were out of stock everywhere. And he basically said to me, he does have one in stock. It's got a problem with the Wi-Fi, but he's getting it fixed. Would I like it at a discount price? Um, no, no, sorry, not a discount price. I paid full price for it, but he gave me a little extra, which was a Barlow, um, a Barlow lens, which I've already got. But, you know, fair play. I really wanted the scope, so I was happy to go with it. And when it came, I just assumed that the problem was still there because it wouldn't sync up to my phone. Anyway, getting this telescope, I have the same problem. So I don't know exactly what the problem is. It won't sync up to my phone, but I've downloaded the um, the, the, the software on my computer, and I've also who was my phone, but she plays games on it. So um, which happens to now be my astronomy phone when she's in bed, and it works great. So I will do a video of downloading the application or the, uh, and um, setting it up that way but I'll show you in this instance um, how to do it so okay so sky portal sky portal app and now all I have to do is is a, a option here that says connect and align so you can just connect the scope and just use it but to connect and align, you have to really be outside, obviously, because you want to align it with um, stars or planets or the moon. You can align it with anything that's uh, in, in, the, in the sky, which initially I thought it says collect and align to stars. And I was just like, I don't really know all the stars, but um, I connected it last night, actually. Um, I aligned it up with three planets. So I did Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. And then I aligned it with a fourth, which was the moon, just to be on the safe side, because it's a really easy um, target. And then I had so much fun in locking Saturn 
and being able to leave my scope outside for a couple of seconds while I came in to sort out the DSLR to go back out and then I had no battery on my phone, no battery on the DSLR, I was gutted but I still went out and I still had sat and locked which was a great feeling because it's so frustrating to try and find a planet or to find something and having to constantly move across to find it to follow the the movement but uh, anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna connect it so this is it connected now so you see it's got uh, up down left and right and in it's got a a target in the middle so what you can do is um you you can go uh, zoom out and you can find Mars for instance and you can choose Mars and if you're if you're focused on Mars then you can go left or right Have you see it's moving it's just and down so it's great just pressing down here and the great thing about this is also if you find the planet that you want for instance mars you know i'm inside i can't see the planet but if you find the planet you want after setting up your red dot finder of course and let me just take this off so you can see the inside because it really is beautiful um when you find the planet then there's this little thing on here it's a slider called rate so if you move that down it actually slows the, the, the telescope down so slow that you can't actually really see it moving but if you look through your eyepiece you will see the planet coming closer into the middle it slows it down so much but you can change it let me just move it up just a little bit more so this is fast and then just turn it down just a tad. You see how slower it is? And then a bit more. Now I can see that moving very gradual. It's so slow, but it's so great and uh, also on this app you can change it to night as you see it's a red light but if you turn that night off your screen comes up normal so I keep it on the red light for obvious reasons um, you can set your time you can take this you can take this um, this thing back with the, the background you can take the background off I just haven't got around to really messing around with it at the moment but you know what that's basically it it's a, a 20 minute video on something that's so simple like I said earlier it comes with this great um, helper for your th th this is a, a mobile phone holder and they come with these really like these bungees which are fabulous because they're just like great big hair bubbles um, so this bit goes onto your eyepiece and it locks in well, what, what you can do with this is what I found really frustrating with the one I had before I could never get it right but this one you set your phone up first and you see the camera there you lock it into place you lock it into place with these bungee cords okay so it has these um, bits on the side here and here so you, you put a bit in there and you can come across and you can add it on the top which I add it on the top because a lot of my controls are on the bottom if I'm taking pictures and then it goes onto the telescope at the back oh, maybe let's bring it this way because I'm plugged in okay now for instance um, when I first bought this scope I was advised by the lady in the shop to start off with a 25 millimeter so that you can start um, getting getting your targets and from there you pop this in like I said your cameras there you, you, you line your camera up with the bungee cords this one's a bit slippy so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna 
tighten it extra with that bungee which is great because it does it just you can you can put it everywhere I'm just going to tighten it up there ouch okay just keeps it in place and then that's it put your frame on what happens it's so easy you pop that straight on lock it in and there you go there's your phone on your scope um, another thing that I had a problem with with this scope um, great scope really great scope please don't think I'm putting negatives on it because I'm really not and I was so happy to find this little trick because I didn't want to take it back the finder scope wasn't completely um, syncing up I, I couldn't go any lower and I and I had I had the I, I was lining up my finder scope with um, a, a, an aerial on top of a house that's across the road and my neighbors know me so they know I'm not peeping Tom and I had the finder scope um, onto the aerial but pulling the finder scope all the way down and it stopped and it was stopped from what I could see was just a few millimetres, but a few millimetres at that distance, we all know, is a massive difference when it comes to looking at planets and stars, especially ones far away. I needed it to be accurate, and I was gutted. And it is your, just your generic, basic, cheap finder scope that comes with these scopes. Um, I have an, a new one on order, but I'm really not bothered because this is a great, great trick that I learned on YouTube from a guy unscrew the two little bits of uh, the, the plate under here unscrew it put a tiny little bit of cardboard underneath and screw it back in and Bob's your uncle worked a charm it was perfect and since I've been out with it it hasn't slipped I can understand that moisture might get it a little bit so I'd probably suggest wrapping it in uh, maybe laminate it or something like that it might work better um, but at the moment, it's perfect. So, here it is. Here it is. It's, it's such a lovely scope. I, I really cannot say any more about it. It's incredible. And I absolutely love it. So, um, thank you for listening, I suppose. Uh, my, first, my first unboxing. Take care, everyone, and enjoy. And if you get one, let me know. Be great. Bye.